regardless of the subject you're dealing with, even when they are trying to provoke you and get you to match their anger, you can always err on the side of love and give that soft word and love them as a child of God to totally change the narrative. I want to talk to you about having an authentic conversation about politics and abortion. When it comes to the abortion issue, so many times our mind automatically just goes to politics, right? And I feel like that's another conditioning that they've done with us to make us think that this is a political issue, not a spiritual issue. And we believe at Save One and have witnessed it over the last 24 years that this is best dealt with as a spiritual issue. When Roe came to be the law of the land, and I know it's been overturned, but it still is having an effect on our country. When Roe came to be the law of the land, the church handed over the issue of life to politics, the church with a capital C. We started believing we can't speak to that issue because we're a church and and separation, you know, like we handed it over to them. And I don't believe that that it has bettered itself through politics. Uh, We can take this issue back from politics. I truly believe that because in the local church, this is where we should be talking about it, not just in politics. People who are whole and healthy and healed find that in the local church through the healing of Jesus Christ. And they, in turn, go out and, like like what Jack was saying about Timothy was watching. We had no idea he was watching. But he was seeing these women come out because they had been through a Bible study at the local church. Uh, when we, where we stand right now, we've raised an entire generation of Christians to believe that this subject is best dealt with in politics. So we have a long road of taking it back from politics, but we absolutely believe that's not true. Politics are always downstream from culture, and it's time the church drive that culture yes. instead of politics driving that culture. Now, at the same time, we need to be involved in politics. That's one avenue to fight this issue. I believe we should be the loudest voice in Washington, the Christian voice, because then that's when we'll be driving things. But we we can't put all of our eggs in that one basket and think that's where the real power lies, because we just felt the real power. This is where the real power is, the local church. And so we, we don't want to let the politicians and the celebrities and social media and the, and the media on TV, we don't want them to be directing the narrative. We can have those authentic conversations that are so countercultural to what we're used to hearing, just politics, politics, politics. We can gradually take that back by the more people that we raise up to tell the truth. We don't have to look at those who are trying to silence us in politics as the enemy. We have one enemy. We can move their issue aside. We can look at them as an image bearer and and always, always err on the side of love. Because when you start thinking that this person screaming at me is not my enemy, there is something directing them to treat me this way. You, you look at them differently, and you're able to love them and respond in love, even if they're yelling politics or, you know, or, or us feeling hopeless that we can't do anything other than vote every four years about this issue. So it is best dealt with right here in the local church, which takes me to my next authentic conversation. I'm always so thankful when pastors are not afraid to talk about this issue from the pulpit because like you've heard so far this morning, this is best dealt with here. We're we're having an onslaught out there in the world about this issue. So why would we think we need to be in a bubble in here? We need to deal with this because this is real life happening right here in the local church. Your pastors love you very much, and they love this community. They're willing to deal with the hateful emails and the people who don't like that this is being talked about here. They're willing to deal with that if they can get through to the people and to that watching world 
that is seeing what's happening inside this church. Uh, what, what the people are looking at outside this church, looking in, they are wanting to see something that's real. When you think about everything out there in the world, nothing is real. We have AI. We have real, uh, reality shows. We have, you know, all of these things that are around us constantly that aren't real. But when they see a church that is standing and has not wavered, We'll talk about the tough issues, totally countercultural. I see a church that like has this storm just battering it, but they stand strong and are unmoving. That is when Jesus smiles on this community because he sees, and so does that watching world. They see what's happening here, and they know that's the real deal. I can go there and deal with these tough subjects. Because right now, they don't know what to believe. It's an ever-moving target for them. But when they see you and hear you, they know that it's going to be different. So regardless of the subject you're dealing with, with in reference to abortion, we can always, always err on the side of love. Even when they are trying to provoke you and get you to match their anger on Facebook or, or wherever it is that they're trying to bully you into silence. You can always err on the side of love and give that soft word and love them as a child of God to t totally change the narrative.